All right, we live. We here at the Soliloquies exhibit um, with one of the exhibit's featured authors, Miss Morgan Renee Meyer. Um, one of the things that she did, you know, when I submitted all of these pieces to different writers um, to either write a poem or a song or a story about one of the pieces, she wrote a phenomenal story. It's one of the stories that I um, everybody has to stop by and listen to whenever they're in the exhibit. But, you know, we're going to get into her um, book, The Celibacy Chronicles. It's also included in this exhibit. You know, I had to include all my friends that's authors that's writing things for young people to see that. There's people right here in the community that's authors. You know, you might be reading a book by, from somebody you can't touch, but this is somebody that you know, you know, and, you know, wanted to touch on a subject that was important to her. So, you know what I mean? Morgan, I appreciate you. Thank you. That's and, uh, you know, let's get into your book, The Celibacy Chronicles. What was your intention, you know, behind creating, you know, this here book? The Celibacy Chronicles. My intention behind it was... Um, it was a lot of inner work and focusing on just my life, uh, college and post-college, and just the value of our energy and who we share it with, because I think it's so important. And the type of culture that we live in today, the type of uh, access to the internet, and it's, it's just, I just think times are, I won't say different, because obviously energy exchange has been around forever, but I think we just have more access to it. And so I just thought it would be great to sit down and just talk about my journey, talk about some lessons learned, some um, patterns or things that I saw that didn't serve me and how I could take, you know, maybe time off from that to really just get to know myself outside of, uh, you know, just physical contact. What kind of fulfillment did you uh, receive within yourself from, you know, creating this, this project? Well, for one, um, I'm an author now, so like that's kind of cool. Uh, it was kind of a impulsive, I would say spiritual process, because I didn't do a ton of research on how to really publish a book, but the universe just made a way for me. I have author friends that really stepped up and helped me get it to the version that it is now. Um, shout out to Copper Vibrations and my sister Nikita Gordon, they really helped the girl come through. But um, so it, it, it showed me that like my words matter too. I've had great success with it as far as going to different platforms and um, sharing poems from it and people saying, you know, like, oh, like that helped me understand some things or realize some things. And um, it kind of challenged me to, I guess, deal with all types of people, not just adults, because I feel like this could apply to teenagers as well, um, some of the topics that I talk on. So um, yeah, it was just a way to really open up and talk about, you know, the taboo topic that just mm -hmm. needs to be talked about. Have you had an opportunity to connect with like some young groups? Or any, you know, young girls? You know? Not young groups, but people, uh, individuals with younger daughters and nieces and stuff. They told me that they've, you know, sat down and read a book with their nieces and things like that. And I do plan to um, be more involved with these, you know, as time comes. I got the things planned for it mm -hmm. that I would like to engage with them more intentionally, not just by way of somebody giving them a book. I can dig it. Yeah. So uh, another, you know what I mean, really cool thing, you know, about your book is we got a lot of artist friends. You know, so you collaborated oh, yeah. with a lot of visual artists, you know, to, uh, for them to connect images, you know, that go along with your book. So first off, what made you want to do that, you know, and how has it contributed, you know, to your book? Well, I wanted to do it because, like yourself, I just believe in supporting local. We have a lot of dope artistic friends. Um, some of these people I knew, some I didn't. I just shared the vision of what I had in mind, and they... And I met them on like Instagram or something, and they was with it. Um, and that's important to me because I did something similar with um, an open mic. There's a, a brother in this art gallery, D. Howe, and we used to do a collab with artists and poets. And so I thought that was dope, and I wanted to bring that concept to my book because it's only, I think, 13 or so poems, 17 poems. And so to have artwork, you know, to kind of correlate with it so it's not just such a a read, it's like I got some visuals to go along with it, I thought that'd be cool. And it gave artists the opportunity to um, gain extra exposure and income because um, we had a book signing, and so they were able to sell their art pieces, which they were able to, um, what else? Yeah, they were selling their art pieces, and we got some prints done for some of them, so it was a great opportunity. No doubt. What I, what I think really is important about you, or the fact that you're in this exhibit, is also about stories on the ground level. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, but you, you already know, you know what I mean, with to us, you one of these legends, you're an underground legend. You got the Gate City Gatekeeper Award that we created specifically for you. 
So I think it's important that people know who you are. You know what I mean? And uh, know your works, recognize your works in the same day, same way we would do a Maya Angelou. Yeah. You know whose voice I love to imitate very often. Yes, you do. <laughs> you know, but uh, what does it feel like? You know what I mean? To be within that realm. You know what I'm saying? Like to be recognized and getting your flowers while you live. Oh man, I love it. I appreciate it. I never take it for granted because, like I said, we're around so many talented people. It's insane, and so. To know that I'm just using my gifts, that's really all that I'm doing. Um, the creator gave me these artistic abilities and I'm putting to use, so I'm grateful for that. I still have breath in my body. Um, and then I'm inspired by my friends. So um, to, to be awarded and told that what I'm doing is useful and it's, it's good and I know that's better in my community and that people are receiving what I'm putting out is not falling on deaf ears, that feels really good. It really does. Or well, some, uh, you know, the legends, you know that people may not know. Matter of fact, before we get into that question, I appreciate you for introducing me to Logie Meek. I was about to say you know who I'm saying. I knew who you was going to say, so I had to throw that in yeah. there first, you know what I mean? Like that. I appreciate you for introducing us to yeah. him, you know what I mean? Because he's, Woo. you know what I mean? I had the opportunity to experience, you know what I mean, being in his classroom, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, he's a teaching style that, you know, I kind of model, you know, mm -hmm. some things after I have my own way of educating, but mm -hmm. being in his class, being in his class, like being in the class of people like D Noble, yeah, you know um, wow. Brian Terman, you know yep. I get the experience. Their teaching styles and it further inspired me, yeah, you know to educate, you know even in the way that I do this gallery. This is dope. You know, this is a great who, start. Who are some of the other um, legends wow. you know, that have inspired you? So we can't live out Sister Mayotte. Mm -hmm. um, she's known in the streets as Sylvia Sandbag. She's also an educator. I've known her since my teenage years, and she does something called Know Thyself Book Studies, where we read different books and we just talk about it and I think that's a dope concept and sidebar I was, I've been organizing my stuff lately and I came across some of those old papers that she was giving us because what she does is take like maybe excerpts or quotes from the book and we discuss it and I was like you know I need to really be saving these and keeping this file because we're at that age where we are the educators we are the ones that showing you we're already active and doing the work so mm -hmm. it's not nothing to uh, I guess take for granted or throw away right. um, but yeah definitely sister my eye she the truth uh, another underground legend I would have to say my good sister uh, Henrietta Carr she is one of my sewing mentors but it went beyond that I initially started coming to see her see her for sewing, learning how to sew, and I was actually a little discouraged just getting my nerves. So we just became friends. We go out to eat and shoot the breeze at her house. Um, yeah, she's a dope, dope underground legend with a beautiful story. Um, who else? And I was gonna say Logie. I mean, but you can expound on that because you met him first, you know what I mean? So you got an experience that is, you know, way deeper than mine, you know? Yeah, so that brother, so uh, Lorenzo Meacham, he uh, was known out here in Greensboro. He did a lot, he, he sang, he acted, he was a professor at UNCG, he taught um, in African American Studies Department, and I took his African American for, uh, poetry class. And it was just such a vibrant experience, like you really came to class, and he just always had energy, like it, it didn't feel so, and I ain't gonna say all, all professors can probably even do this in the way that he did, because he was so lax, I think for like our final, it was like either you do it or you don't. Like mm -hmm. you just, it, it was he was just amazing. He he really made you feel like you were a part of the learning process, and so it was up to you whether or not you wanted to um, take what he was giving you, and you really wanted to kind of learn about the stuff. It was an engaging class, but even outside of that, just he was just so like he would um, invite us class to his house sometimes, just so we could you know vibe as a people. And so I just really appreciate the energy that he put out. And he also, he seemed so fearless to me because he was a very talented man. And he was a storyteller by nature. He'd just be talking to you and a whole story or four or five and went by. So I just- You'd be there for about two hours. You, and not even mean to. And it'll feel like it was two minutes. So he just had that type of energy. And, and I, I think we vibrated with it because it's similar to ours. It's like kindred spirits in a way. And so I'm grateful that he was the type of person that could take his teaching beyond the classroom and then to see him in the community doing his thing it was just a blessing i'm glad to have you met that man so um this image you know that we're sitting in front of right here by carlos park you know who, who, who was very excited that you had even written about his image you know before he even got a chance to hear your story he heard it yet? Um, he heard it. He heard it that day. You oh, know, because um, that was the day I was getting ready to come over and um, and upload the joint. Oh yeah. Then he was like, "Did Morgan write about Run of Mine?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, it did." Matter of fact, 
she snapped on that joint. You know what I mean? So like, and I appreciate you because you executed it in the exact way that I was looking, you know, for. But again, I feel like you know you probably had an advantage because you you write plays. You got you got all type of stories. You know what I mean? In the file. You know what I mean? But nonetheless, it's a part of you, and I'm grateful that this, you know what I mean, was an opportunity for you to even like utilize it. You know, so. What about this image stood out to you and made you want to create the type of story that you created? Man, um, well, for one, <laughs> I got an old soul. Yeah. I'm 75, trapped in a 30 year old body. So something just came out to me. She just looked very nanny ish. Like, this ain't your mama. This is probably your mama, mama. Well, your mama, mama, mama. And in this particular audio that I did for it, she was a great grandmother. Um, I think a lot of black art and just, I don't know life in general has to do with creation of life and children and family and what that looks like and so i just felt connected to the piece it's like you know when life enters the world and you have nana or that that matriarch figure that's nourishing that's doing what nanas do and i don't know it just called out to me you added sound effects <laughs> so like you had a whole storyline like i'm listening to this joint like like, I'm like, is this a story that she found? <laughs> this a story that she wrote? Like, and then I know that you did it in less than 24 hours. Yeah, I was slacking. I'm we, like, we nah, but had to do it. no matter what, you did it in less than 24 hours. Yeah. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. It was you like, know, so. Yeah, it was nothing. Yeah, I had to, so this is how I was. I was at my desk. I had my phone and my little, my little light and all that. And I had a bowl of water and I had a washcloth. And I was dipping it and wringing it out in certain parts. I was pausing. Cadence to match the world, you know, getting a little creative with it. Nuts. Yeah, got to bring something different. I knew, I mean, I thought this was a dope exhibit. It was the least I could do. I mean, I, I bring I, some love to it. I didn't want to just read words. I, that's what I did want to do. I was like, I don't want to just read a story. Yeah, so. no, I, I appreciate you, you know, bringing that creative vibe in, and even, you know, being creative enough or using your creativity enough to bring the story out like that. Because the moment I first heard the story, the moment I first heard that water, I was like, oh man, she snapped. Soon as you heard the water breath. Soon as I heard the water, because I'm like, yo, she about to do this? Yeah. Yeah. And then like it's other stuff that I kinda don't even want to say because I want people to just listen to the story and have the same exact experience. Alright, forget it. When I heard that, <laughs> I'm like, yo, she It wasn't too much. She going crazy. I'm like, maybe right I should now. redo this. I was like, no, nah, that baby was, Sam, they don't know. It me. added so much to the story, you know, and I'm like, yo, like you really like you actually did more than I was looking for. You know what I mean? I was looking for people to create stories. I didn't know that you was about to come with sound effects I mean, and a voice, you know, to go along with it. But you act, you know what I mean? But it's, right. it's you beautifully, you know what I mean, incorporated every part of you. I you think know, that's well, how I thought about it. Because I'm like, when I write, you got to write for a performance. You, well, yeah. I take that back. You don't. Because I've learned that through, through poetry and editing. You don't necessarily have to write for a stage. But because I am an actress and a performer, I think consciously, I just. I'm always writing as if this could be performed or somebody hear it as if it's a theatrical piece. And that's what it was to me. Because yeah. as, as I was writing, okay, so y'all, I waited to the last minute. He been told us, been had pictures. This wasn't even one of the pictures he sent. I saw it on the live. And I'm like, oh, that's what I want to do. And so when I sat down to do it, it just flowed out of me. So I was like, okay, how can we jazz this up? And that's, I was like, okay, we got to get the props going. So yeah. it, was, it was a great experience. Thank you for uh, having this space and allowing us to create because it helped me get out of a bubble that I was in and wasn't really doing much and since then the floodgates have opened so I've been writing even more and yeah it was exciting to bring that out of me I'm I'm looking forward to uh, what's coming you know next in your creations um can we get some five fun Morgan facts you know five rare Morgan facts maybe you know wherever you want to go spice it up you know for us child I love a good q-tip (laughs) <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh, boy, I, I've been buying extra from the Dollar Tree, and I keep I keep them in a little. I know I'm supposed to candle wax or whatever, but it'll be just somebody cute tip. Um, I've been to the Grand Canyon before. Okay. Her main last night time I was places to be. Um, My man going dog sledding in the right, Dog sledding. Oh, we just like to try the world, do fun stuff, but dog sledding. All right. Um. <laughs> Um. <laughs> I got to tell 
so much of my business. Everybody know everything about me. I have a question. Um, I have a question. Yes, yes. Where do you get your inspiration? Like, how do you determine what it is you're going to write about? Um, I I feel like my style of poetry, if, if you take a peek in this book or just in general, see some of my YouTube clips, a lot of them are very realistic and straightforward. I don't do too much playing with a bunch of metaphors and it's so confusing, you don't you gotta get super deep. I can go there, but it's just not my style. So I think stuff I'm going through, if you cheated on me, I'm gonna write about how you a dog. If, you know, like I'm just, it just, and then nature, that's the second answer. Cause I go outside, see the, the wind, the tree leaves blowing in the wind, and that's a whole poem. Okay. Yeah, those are two, my two biggest inspirations: real life and nature. Mm -hmm. So you um you're a serial entrepreneur. Child, yeah. I mean, you got you. I mean, you crochet. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you know, I, could, I would almost think that who a friend of yours could have made this shirt, and you would have you know done you know the extras to it just to add your own flavor <laughs> to it. Yeah. Possibly or possibly not. Um, of course, obviously you're an author. That's why we, you know, sitting here talking. You're a storyteller. You're mm -hmm. a playwright. Um, what else do you do? I, uh, Everything. I just about. I think I have an important service of uh, contributing to the community by child watching. That's a power tool. Mm -hmm. um, I cook vegan foods along with one of my community sisters. Lane. We serve plant-based meals, so that's, art. that's an art. Yeah, that's culinary art. Um, I, I do. I, I think it's called what is it? Fiber arts, because I've extended beyond crochet now. I make uh, wall hangings with yarn. Um, okay. I'm about to get on canvas with the yarn. Like I might crochet some granny squares and then glue them onto the canvas and do some things with that. Um, and I, I can I can create stuff in nature. That's something I learned something from the sister out here called Cobb. Where it's like sand, uh, clay, water, and straw, and you mix it all together, and you can form ashtrays, whatever you want to make out of it. But they make houses out of this stuff in like other countries and things like that. So I can do stuff in nature. I'm just an overall creator. I'm very good with my hands. Um, yeah. Anybody that's you know watching this, this is where we're gonna wrap it up. Okay. Anybody that's watching this, what's one thing you need them to know about you, and what's your cash out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you need to know. So, you need to know that when you wake up in the morning, you need to drink water, stretch, give thanks, speak affirmations of your life, go over your goals. And if you haven't done that today, take five minutes to do that. Social media will be here when you get back. And my cash app is money sign, M O R E N Y 1990. No doubt. I appreciate you. And all of those things that she encouraged you to do in the morning, she has a t shirt that has all of those things up there. So if you need to buy that t-shirt so you can have a checklist as well, or have a checklist for anybody right. else, mm -hmm. pull up on her, you know what I'm saying? Send her that cash out, mm -hmm. along with where she need to send it, include your price for shipping, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she'll get it to you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. Up, yeah, appreciate you, Morgan. Thank you, good brother. No doubt about it. All right. All right. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Come out to the um, soliloquies. Gallery. We're here to what? April? April 5th. April 5th, y'all. See some of the amazing things in here. And what you can do is some of them have uh, codes underneath where you can scan it with your smartphone. Like, let me show you this one. You would scan it with your smartphone. I ain't the most tech savvy, so if I can do it, you can do it. You scan it with your camera and the audio of a poem or something like that will come up. So that's what we was discussing by that picture over there. My audio version is connected to that picture. So thank y'all for tuning in. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.